Hey guys, JH, welcome to the practice day. I hope you all had a nice uh, new year. We're all still getting over it here. Some of you may not have had it yet. It's just great to get out here and <laughs> on the JH practice day away from all the craziness of, of New Year's Eve and everything else that goes on associated with it. Okay guys, a couple of things today. Now in terms of getting our getting our smear factor going and the releasing of the golf club very early in the in the channel lock downswing what, what we've got to do is is understand the angles and the angularity of the process now when I say we're going to smear and sometimes and I could be the I could be the the culprit here in the misunderstanding but when I've showed the smearing with the with the trail hand where it's this type of action you're probably seeing the after effect of of the smear which is post impact The, the smear has to be a straight line movement with 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 the lead thumb. As we come in, the lead thumb does that. It stays in line, and the forearm stays in that configuration. There, we don't get the thumb coming down and the forearm rolling. Post impact, it goes that way there you're still maintaining what I call elbow lock you're not letting the elbow roll and the wrist roll through the ball it's got to be coming towards you and, and what I try to get the feeling of for the guys is as they're coming down into the ball as they're moving here the thumb is pointing straight at the ball there but like that that the, that the wrist is arched down and the thumb is pointing like that like it's a thumb down like you're trying to give a thumbprint on top of the ball when you hit it it's that now what that does guys is that that really does straighten the lead arm and locks the lead arm if you roll it if you if you get your smear and you roll smear it you can just the arm will come into the body that can be a problem if, if you roll smear it here this arm can come in this way you need to thumb down it you need to thumb print it here now um, Billy Phillips uh, on a MMI put up a slow-mo of himself and he okay it's very cold where he is and he's rugged up uh, and and probably Billy that could be probably a little bit of the narrowness that you're experiencing because you're rugged up 35 degrees here 36 degrees right now Celsius you know we have the highest UV uh, danger levels in the world here in Australia we aren't the, the only the only um, the only levels we have are extreme very extreme unbelievable and don't go outside and today I think we've got a don't go outside because it's really, I can really feel it getting into me. So, so if you're getting a little bit of, and I get a little bit of that in my golf swing. I've always done that. Because I, I really do keep the blade pointing down the line. Um, but, but, but my, that is, is, is not in here. It's not in here like that. It's not narrow there. It's, it's still got a bit of width on it. So for anybody that's getting in narrow and, and, and trying to and, and you're not releasing early and you want to release and you want to get your smear, your smear is vertical guys, it's there. There it is, it goes from here and it smears vertically or in line with the forearm, it's not a roll smear. There. It's a thumbprint smear. It mo moves out with, with, with great, great in line precision here, there. 
and the pinky the pinky stays under the forearm the pinky doesn't the pinky doesn't roll you could do a bit of that when you're pitching the ball and you want to sort of you know, feather it or that type of thing it can be you know pinky up where you get a little bit of roll or pinky down where you get a little bit of you know draw roll and kick left but that's when you're shot making but when you basically just want to hit it um, dead straight you need to uh, to have that so so it's a it's a thumbprint smear as we get here it's a thumbprint now watch what happens watch what happens if I come down and I thumbprint smear it here see where my arm goes it goes there and it locks the elbow if I come in here and I roll it if I smear roll it this arm can come in here too much so it's a thumbprint out got to feel like and just get a club if you've got a club at home that's just got a uh, yeah, no head on it, just a grip. Just get it and just fire it like that. Just get it and fire it down like that. Your thumb is an extension of the shaft and just fire that at the golf ball here. There. 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 That's a way to feel it. Now the other thing, and it's just cropped up on the on, on MMI's, um, Bill Phillips' site, and he asked me to, to give a JH overview. And it's about containment of the club. Now, now containment of a club is, 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 is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Now, when, when Martin Ayres coined the phrase containing the club, uh, I was with him. I was with Marty in the early stages of Marty building uh, DOCF. You know, we spent hundreds of hours on the practice too. So I saw it happen and I know what he was, was talking about. And, and what, what Marty was talking about with his containment is that he wanted to keep the club within the confines of the body here. He never wanted it to get outside these vertical containment lines. Now we'll do that but the intention is that if he could actually swing it within that containment line here on his backswing here and then because when he routes when he routes he's got to get outside the containment line but the feeling is that you don't get outside the containment line. So in a nutshell and, and just overviewing the, the, um, the definition of containment, it's not letting the club uh, escape from inside your arm structure in the backswing. Now what Marty used to talk about with DOCF was, was his term, terminology, uh, his terminology was J-barring it, or Johnson bar, and that was that was this. Marty used to, he said his first movement back from the ball was this. Here. Now it's very much like, like channel lock. But channel lock, the good thing about, well, well let, let me point it. If you, if you J-bar with, with DOCF J-bar, it is type of containment in a conventional golf swing, and you've got that type of ball position there, when you J-bar, you run into yourself because you're here. So in, in ways that can be beneficial, in other ways it can be non-beneficial. Beneficial, it can make you get here and stay within the containment lines. But then you've got to do, but then you've got to do your pick up and your roll back and your roll down. So the J bar in a conventional golf swing is here. And it goes straight into the body here and then it's picked up and contained. See that the butt of the club is still contained within those within those vertical containment lines outside the body. With channel lock we have a very similar uh, process and application. We probably have, and you know, Marty won't mind me using his terminology, uh, we have a sort of a J-bar. Uh, we don't have it we don't have the J-bar within the confines of the body though. That's the difference. Our J-bar will move here. The club is still within the, within the, um, the confines of the arms, but it's not within the confines of the body. And, that, and that's where, where channel lock differs to, to, um, to conventional golf swing and particularly DOCF. Now, now when your J-bar in a conventional golf swing and you get it here you get tremendous backloading containment and 
you know, a firing of the golf club, the, the expulsion of the containment. It's a very powerful golf swing. And I know when I used to do it, I used to hit the ball, you know, very, very strongly. And Marty's a very strong hitter. And, and everybody that, that, that takes on um, DOCF is very, very strong in their action. If you look at um, the derivation of DOCF, which Jay Gillespie's got, Diz, he posts on my channel, Jay Gillespie from Oklahoma. Uh, he's got a very powerful golf swing and he contains better than anybody. And his is a variation of J-Bar, but uh, very much um, containment. Um, so, so the difference in, in, in channel lock with the containment is that our club is outside our containment line, our vertical containment line, straight away. Conventional, it's inside. This is how they want to contain it. They want to contain it between the arms and between the body. Now I want to contain it between the arms because you have to do that in any golf swing, in any type of golf swing, to have any type of proficiency and efficiency. You don't want that. You, 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 could, you don't want to take the club back like that. You want to take it back like that. And it's not flapping outside. It's not flapping outside the arm structure. It may look like that. And it may even be like that. But the intention is that it shouldn't be like that. The intention is that when we take it back, in channel lock, when we take it back, we go here. Now I've still got it contained. If I turn around, that club is still within that, that trail arm confinement line. It's not out here. It's not away from that forearm. To have it not contained would be that. See, that's outside that containment line. There it is there. There's the containment line. That's the twirl containment. That's what Marty used to do in DOCF. Now I do a lot of that in my golf swing anyway. Be because the natural tendency for me in DOCF is to take the club back looking at the golf ball. Now if I turn around that golf club's looking at that golf ball. Now I wouldn't get that if I, if I took the club back and I rolled it here. The club's pointing over there. So I've got that that, that, that sort of twirl and, uh, and containment, J-barring type process going on anyway. And, and that's because I play square to square in the face. And, and in channel lock, I want, I want to do that. I want to keep the club face looking at the ball. I don't want to roll the face open. And I don't want to roll the forearms open. Well, more to the point, I don't want to lose containment, I suppose. Now, Bill Phillips did a good... Uh, explanation and demonstration of that the other day and he's got a down pat he understands it and, he, and he's worked it out just through his own own understanding of um, of swing dynamics and mechanics and, and he said you know I don't want to get here and roll it open yeah I, I want to take it back and I want to have the club still looking at the ball now th that's the basic premise guys the basic tenant um, of geometry in in channel lock in the within that in that we're here in this this channel here we want the club in the channel and we want all of the club in the channel and we want the club looking in the channel and for the club looking in the channel the face has got to be pointing in uh, down that channel and along that channel we don't want the face pointing outside the channel if we were a ship and we got outside the channel we'd run aground now, my terminology would be, as soon as we turn the face over here, our faces run aground. We're out of the channel. We've lost the deep water, the security of the deep water. We're out here. We've got to get off the shore back into the channel. So, so containment, guys, is, is that. I feel a lot of pressure down. I feel a lot of pressure down in my golf swing. My containment... Is, is, is what I call a is, is, is a gravity down containment some guys will get there like Marty in um, in DOCF DOCF is a is a vertical containment it's what I call a float a float loading containment because it goes here it goes off the ball there's none, none of this there's no extension down and back at all so, so it, it's entirely different in terms of 
of the pressures applied in the containment. So, so in in um, in 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 channel lock, it's here and there. It's contained, still contained. We don't want to get uncontained and uncontained. We want to be contained, con continue to be contained. So it's pressure down, pressure down. And the smear guys, the smear is, the smear is, there, there's our smear, thumbprint. Like you're trying to get into the CIA building and they want your thumbprint. There it is on the pad. That's what you want to think. It's a tangential, tangential attack on the ball with both thumbs. Going to give two thumbprints. We don't want to smear our thumbprints. Our smearing is a vertical smear. The hand is doing that. It's not doing that. It will probably, it can get a little bit of that post impact, but if you can eliminate that and alleviate that, and you will do that if you have the shoulder blocking the post release here. You'll get that. See, if I turn around, that's still square, see? I don't want to fire it into to impact and then finish here. Now you can do that. If you can hit the ball straight and you can flight it okay, you can do that. Lee Como is like that. Coming into the ball and post impact. But he flights the ball very low. Um, but he's a trapper. But it's a very powerful way to hit the ball. Uh, I can't do that because I get very, very low flight and I get too much of a hard draw and I don't want that. But some guys like that. I just like a feather draw. Or as the Scottish say, they call their, 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 the, the, the perfect motion on the golf swing is it's sketch, which is half a draw. Because guys, if you're someone who hits a really hard draw, and this is just a digression, on, on the realities of ball flight. If you're someone that hits a really strong draw and you fire a draw out there and bring it back, what's happening there? Where's the energy going? The energy is going away from the target before it starts to go towards the target. You don't want the energy going out there and then pick, losing that energy and then starting to go this way. You want it going that way as much as you can all the time. So you want sort of a rifling type draw. You don't want a big slinging draw. You've got to have a lot of pace, a lot of speed uh, to hit big slinging draws and hit them a long way and more to the point hit them straight because your energy is going out there guys, it's going away from the target. You stand behind the guys that really draw the ball on the tour, it looks like a straight ball, it just goes down and it just rifles this way, just like a rifle shot, it's just like that. Even the guys that fade the ball, you stand behind them, there's none of this, it just goes dead straight and falls off at the end, a proper drawer is dead straight falls off at the end. I don't hit a proper draw. Um, I, I hit a little baby draw. There's a little bit of movement on a couple of yards. I'd like to hit it. I have had occasions uh, when I came back from seeing Mo Norman the first time. For the first six months I hit it dead straight and it just fell off to the left at the end of the flight. So it was a rifling type flight. So that's just a digression but you don't want to have any big slinging draws. And if you have the slinging draws, and they're starting too far right, guys, you know, look at your ball position. You're either too far back and you're too extreme by the time you get to the ball, the club's pointing too far right if you're right-hander, or you've just got um, um, too much uh, club face uh, turned down on. So just work on that. Just experiment. Open the club face a bit and move the ball up and down a little bit so that you can get rid of if I wanted to hit a really severe, sort of out there and slinging draw over here, I'd play the ball back there. But I'd have the face shut down to 20 degrees. And I'd fire it there and it'd start down then it'd go over there. You know, that, that, that's if I wanted to go around something. But you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. 
So that, that's just an explanation of the, the, the dynamics of the golf swing, or the, the dynamics of the ball flight. Now guys, what uh, someone uh, brought to my attention on the, um, on, on the JH Practice T um, channel is that um, I haven't got as much trail leg flex as I had a month ago and he's absolutely correct and I, I've just sort of got into that now I don't want to be in that I, I want to maintain on the backswing I want to maintain some flex in that in that backswing I want to maintain it here because that really does give me a lot of uh, coiling tension there outside in the rump area inside thigh really does now when I do that I feel like that 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 lead leg is augured into the ground that way it's done that and I'm resisting that augering by by the by the by the spikes on my, my shoes and my and my feet going that way my legs going that way my foot's going that way so that's that great support for the for the vertical axis the trail axis if if you if you let this this trail axis straighten on the backswing I don't feel I don't feel 30% of the coil or torque uh, in that trail axis and I don't get enough elastic rebound on the downswing okay guys now that was a lot of technical stuff and no hitting uh, but I think they're important points um, there's a couple of guys over here a little bit dangerous um, hitting here so I might just cool it for a minute and um, uh, if they're not as dangerous as I think I'll come back and I'll hit some shots but those points are important and I think I clarified uh, some some points for for Bill in terms of containment containment is different for different people you can have a push down containment outside the body uh, you can have an inside containment with a float load on it depends what you want to do but essentially containment is not letting the shaft get away outside the inside of the arms that's what containment is to me okay guys if, if, if these guys are not as erratic as uh, as they look I'll come back and we'll hit a few shots <laughs>